Hey everybody, if you watched part one of the financial preparedness, this is part two. I had to take the video and uh, shorten it down a little bit. I had to split it into two. There was a lot of information I needed to get out there, but it just ran a little long. So hopefully you guys, uh, it's a little easier for you to absorb, a little easier for you to, for you to take in. But uh, yeah, this is part two of financial preparedness, one of the bedrock videos that all my other videos are going to be built on. Now we're going to start talking about numbers. It's depressing and some people might not want to hear it, but this is the way it is. First, numbers are numbers. They are what they are. You're not going to change them. Two is always going to be two for, for our sake. That's it. And they have no emotions. They have no feelings. They don't care. Okay, there's a dad joke that says, why was six afraid of seven? I don't know if you've heard this one. Stop me if you've heard it. Because seven, eight, nine. Okay, info you. Six was not afraid of seven. Six is not afraid of anything. Numbers have no emotions. They don't care. So take that into account. Anytime you want to bring emotion into this, numbers don't care. Please understand that. Some of you might be saying, well, heck, I'm one of the four out of five that's living paycheck to paycheck. How am I supposed to do these things? Well, okay, let's start there. First, let's go back to my first video. Accept, own it. You need to own it. You need to accept where you are is because of a decision you made or didn't make or whatever. Just own it and get past that. Stop focusing on the problem. Start focusing on the solution. Stop focusing on the problem. Please, you're never going to get past it. And then understand numbers. Let's say you're less than the average and you make 300 bucks a week. That's what you make. I'm just throwing this number out there. You make 300 bucks a week. You're living paycheck to paycheck. That $300, unless something changes external, the number is not going to change. It's 300 bucks. That's it. That's all it's ever going to be is $300. You need to change. You need to change circumstances. Let me explain. If you're in a position that you can work overtime, remember you are a commodity. That's it. Take your emotion out of it. Just like the numbers take, you're dealing with numbers, take emotion out of it. I get it. I, I know you want to have emotion in there. Don't do it. I'm warning you. I'm cautioning you. Don't I'm advising you don't have emotion. Okay. Just look at it as math. You are a commodity. Unless you are more valued by someone else in the exchange of your time, your information, your education, what you know, then you're getting 300 bucks and that's it. You're not getting any more. So you either have to change how much money comes in or change how much money goes out or preferably both. The best way to start is how much money goes out. When was the last time you actually looked, tracked, and followed how much money you spent? I know I did. And I was surprised at how much money I spent on, don't laugh at me, at the time, it was soda. I bought soda and that's what I drank predominantly. And I tracked it. I tracked what I spent my money on. I'm like, oh my God, I spend a lot of money on soda. So. Now it's up to me. What do I choose to do? Do I choose to drink less soda? Do I choose to drink a cheaper soda? You know, maybe one that's not as tasty as I thought the other one was. Eventually you get used to everything, it doesn't matter. But you have to make a decision just like I had to make a decision. But the first thing you need is information. Where do you spend your money? And start reducing it. Okay, uh, I looked up and I studied of people that were financially successful, what didn't they do or what did they do? because I don't wanna reinvent the wheel. I wanna I want to see what they do. One of them, and I'm not talking about people that are famous and totally rich, and I'm talking about people that built up and made it there. One of them is they don't buy new cars. This is just an example. If you're thinking about buying a new car, stop. Let me give you a little exercise. Right now, I have an old car and it is paid off. Yay. And since it's old and has a lot of miles on it and it's not ritzy, my insurance, per month cost me less than 50 bucks. So that vehicle out there cost me less than $50 a month, 
and my money is going out towards that vehicle. Standard. Now, my car is old, which means it breaks once in a while and I have to fix it. I usually do it myself. You can get on the internet. We're gonna, we're gonna cover this in, later on about doing things yourself, valuing your own labor versus valuing someone else's. But that's a different, that's a different video. So once in a while, I do have to fix my vehicle. And once my vehicle costs me per month a dollar value, which I'll give you here in a second, then I will buy another vehicle, but it won't be new. Never buy a new vehicle. And I know you're out there, I'm gonna buy a new vehicle if I want. Okay, that's cool. All right, I got no problem with that. Don't listen, it's your business. So purchasing a new vehicle is a bad idea and it's a bad investment, but that's for each, to each his own. You make that decision. But let's just say I did, let's do the comparison. My vehicle costs me 50 bucks a month, actually less than that, not counting gas and stuff and my repairs, $50 a month. If I was to go out and purchase an average new vehicle, my car payments would be approximately, I say approximately depending on which one, $500 a month. And I would have to carry full coverage insurance. And if you think full coverage insurance on a brand new 2020 car, is less than 50 bucks a month, you got another thing coming. So we're looking at between two and three, depending on what kind of car you have, let's say $300 a month in insurance, plus the 500, that's $800 a month, $800 a month, every month. And you're paying interest on that loan. I'm paying less than 50 bucks a month. So 50 bucks a month, 800 bucks a month, 50 bucks a month, 800 bucks a month. If something goes wrong in my life, something happens to my income stream, am I gonna be more set up for success if I have to spend 50 bucks a month or 800 bucks a month? And if I don't pay the 50 bucks a month, I lose my insurance, I might get a fine, I, I park my car. If I don't pay that 800 bucks a month, my car gets repossessed, your, your, my, uh, my credit takes a hit. A repossession, do you know what that, oh my gosh. Do you see how one is more setting yourself up for success than another? And what could I do with that $750 a month? Now to some of you, 750 bucks a month is not that big of a deal. To me, I'm an average Joe. 750 bucks a month, that's a lot of money. Now when it comes to my vehicle, as I said, it's paid off. If I was to get a new vehicle, it would cost, give or take, $800 a month with insurance. We went over those numbers. I will own my vehicle. As I said, I have to repair it. That does cost me money once in a while. However, until my vehicle costs me, let's, let's take the number down. Let's say $500. Until my vehicle costs me $500 in either parts or my time, labor, or if it's beyond me, someone else's labor that I have to pay for, unless it costs me $500 a month for say six months, I'm not going to get a new vehicle and it won't be new, a new vehicle to me. I'm not going to get another vehicle. It makes no sense. Every month I am making money. You need to start looking at your money differently. Your money has a high value because the money that you have has been an exchange for you. You have exchanged something for it. Put value to it. Please stop spending it the way most people do, i.e. four out of five people. They're living paycheck to paycheck. But let's get back on point. You are a commodity. So you either make yourself more valuable, i.e. work harder, work smarter, learn your job, get an education, get more training, uh, be that guy that, or girl, the, the person that brings value to the company, the one that's willing to work the overtime, willing to, the one that you have to bring value to yourself. You are a commodity. Now, if I have a hammer and I say this hammer's five bucks, or if I have a piece of cardboard and I cut it out like a hammer, so this, this cardboard hammer's five bucks. Which one has more value? I mean, obviously the real one. You need to make yourself more valuable. You are a commodity. Uh, take your emotions out of it. That's just the way it is. 
So we touch base real quick. Reduce your expenditures, reduce the money that's going out. I give you one simple example, but there's tons of them. You don't need the newest phone. You might not need the big, huge cable package that you have. Maybe they have little antennas where you can just get local channels or, you, or they've got companies like Hulu or there's, there's ways of reducing, but still having some entertainment. Besides the fact that you should be so busy in your life, trust me, you will be if you go down the prepper world, the, the prepper lifestyle down that trail, you are busy. I'm a very busy person every day. I don't watch that much television, trust me. So reduce, reduce how often you go out to eat. There's a, there's a fast food place, a place you can get sandwiches, which I'm not gonna name, and I love them. They're, they're a great company, I, I love the sandwiches, and once in a while we'll go there. Two large sandwiches, and we get the same ones all the time, cost 20 bucks. $20 for two sandwiches. Now you can take that same $20 and go to the store, learn how to make your own food. People don't know how to cook. You know, I, I do, I, I, I cook, I bake. I instead of going and buying cookies and stuff, I make my own, but again, these are baby steps. Reduce where you spend the money. Now it's up to you. You know, if you wanna go get that $8 latte, half-calf, decaf, vanilla, what the hell? versus just making a cup of coffee at home, that's, that's your prerogative, that's your choice. But again, see video number one, unless you change, your circumstances are not going to change. So you can do a little pain now for less pain later or not. I mean, it, it's up to you, I'm just letting you know. You need to reduce the stream of money going out or increase the stream of money coming in. Now, we will be going over these in later videos. Every time, maybe, not every time, but a lot of the times, when I do something around here where I am saving money, I will show you how easy it is, how simple it is, that you can stop trading labor for someone else's labor and you can basically pay yourself. You're gonna chain your labor for you. So some people say, well, it's not worth my time to do that. Really? It's not? What do you make an hour? You know, you're just gonna give that money to somebody else because it's your time's not is more valuable than theirs. Okay, it's your choice. Not, you know. Okay, unless you change, nothing else is going to change. So, okay, let's recap this video really fast. Financial preparedness. You need to be financially prepared for what life brings you. I hope what's happening in the world right now is an excellent example of how you need to be financially prepared because people aren't. We went over the numbers, how Forbes uh, points out that 78%, almost four out of five of every individual in the United States lives paycheck to paycheck. We went over seven steps, which are generally accepted, again, you can find them on the internet, to reaching financial independence. And I gave you some, some of my personal experience, how I've used them and I have succeeded. These aren't pretend. I've succeeded in some of the steps. I haven't quite got there yet. So, because I'm an average Joe, I'm just this guy right here. I'm the guy in the middle, okay? I used to be down there, now I'm here. One day, hopefully be there. I don't know, I hope we all can. That's a different story. And then we talked about numbers. Numbers are what they are. They don't change. You have to change something, i.e. reduce your expenditures or increase your income. And the only way you're gonna increase your income is by making yourself more valuable or finding some place that finds you more valuable. You need to change your circumstances. You need to look at it. I know it's painful, people don't wanna do it. But if what's happening in the world right now is not teaching you a lesson, if what's happening in the world right now is not convincing you that this is what you need to do, then I obviously am not going to be able to convince you. And remember this, final thought, First video, now it works here. This is what I'm building off of. This is what my videos will build off of. I can't change you. Even what's going on in the world technically can't change you. You can only change yourself. Like always, I hope you got something out of this video. If you know someone who can get something out of this video, please share it with them. Uh, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe. And by the way, it's it's click on the bell, not ring the bell. I found that one out. So, uh, and uh, if, you've, if you've got any suggestions for future videos, things that you'd like me to look into or, or try out for you, put them down in the comment section. 
I will be going over things that can, I'm hoping will point you in the right direction, hope, hopefully help you save money. I'll give you, literally, I will do it to show you that it can be done. On our next video, we're going to be looking at should, would, could versus is and are. And again, this is one of those stepping stone videos on how to think, how to look at the world, and how to live your life. Until next time, my name's Rick. I'm an average Joe. Be happy, be positive, and be prepared.